Welcome back everyone to Momentum. Uh, we're no longer talking about imperfectly inelastic collisions. We're going to be talking about inelastic collisions where objects are bouncing off each other. So let's look at this. A 0.5 kilogram ball traveling at 6 meters per second collides head on with a 1.1 1 .1 kilogram ball moving in opposite directions at a speed of 12 meters per second. Uh, the 0.5 kilogram ball bounces backwards at 14 meters per second after the collision. Find the speed of the second ball after the collision. Okay, so we're looking for the speed of this second ball after they have collided. So again, usually what we're going to do for this is we're going to do momentum initial is equal to momentum final. What we should know is this is before the collision is the momentum initial. And then this is after the collision is the momentum final. So we know m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. So let's kind of plug that all in. The mass of the first one, 0.5. Velocity of the first one, 6. Mass of the second one is 1, and it's moving 12 meters per second to the left, so that's negative 12, is equal to mass of the first one, 0.5. And it's now the first one is going negative 14 after they collide, and second one is 1 kilogram, and we don't know what the v2 final is going to be. Actually, we don't know if it's moving to the right or to the left, uh, but we're going to figure it out once we do this. So let's do the algebra. 0.5 times 6 uh, minus 12 plus 0.5 times 14. And then we actually get V2F is equal to negative 2 meters per second. So what this means is actually this ball is moving 2 meters per second to the left after they collide. Oops. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so next question. What are the initial and kinetic energies of the system? What type of collision is this? So let's look at the kinetic energy initial. <clears throat> we should know that this is going to be, we're going to be looking at this before they collide to find that out. So one half mass of the first one, 0.5. Velocity of the first one, 6 squared, plus one half mass of the second one, 12, uh, 1. Velocity of the second one, negative 12 squared. And let's figure out what that's going to be. 12 squared times 0.5 plus 6 squared uh, times 0.25. And we get around 81 joules. So before they collide, they had 81 joules. And then after they collide, let's figure this out. So we have 1 half. Mass of the first one is 0.5. Velocity is going to be negative 14 after they collide plus one half mass of the second one, one and after Clyde negative two whoops negative two squared uh, squared and let's see what this is going to equal 14 squared times 25 uh, plus we have uh, two and we get 51 joules and we see that we lose energy so when we see we lose energy like this, then we know that this is an inelastic collision. If it had the same amount of energy before and after the collision, that means it would be a perfectly elastic collision or elastic collision. Okay. All right, moving on. A 15 kilogram block is attached to a spring of force constant 500 newton per meter and is resting on a frictionless horizontal surface uh, table. Suddenly, it is struck by a 3 kilogram stone traveling horizontally at 8 meters per second to the right. Whereupon the stone rebounds at 2 meters per second, horizontal to the left, find the maximum distance that the ball, uh, that the block will compress the spring after the collision. Okay, so let's first look at this collision. We're going to do momentum initial equals momentum final. So before the crash, we're going to look at what happens before the crash over here. So we have a 3 kilogram stone going 8 meters per second. Then we have a 15 kilogram block that's not moving, so it's just zero. But after the collision, we have this three kilogram stone going negative two meters per second, or two meters per second to the left, plus the 15 kilogram block, and we don't know what the velocity is, is of this block. So let's figure out what this velocity is for the block. Three times eight, uh, and then plus six. Divide by 15, and then we can see that the velocity of the block is going to be 2 meters per second to the right. Now that we know that, we should be able to see how much this thing got compressed, okay, what we're looking for. So we should know all the kinetic energy of the block 
is going to turn into all elastic potential energy. Okay, so as this block is moving two meters per second to the right, it'll compress it a certain amount, and we want to find out what that is. So one half mass of the block is 15. The block is moving two meters per second. And then when it compresses it totally, there'll be no kinetic energy, only elastic potential energy. So that'll be one half K, which is 500, and then X squared. Now let's figure out what X is going to be. 0.5 times 15 times 2 times 2 divided by 500, and then square root of that, and we get 0 0.24 meters. Okay, so that was a bit complicated because we need to use momentum, and then we need to use energy later on to find the rest. Point three five. Uh, what's that? All right, and so this is in elastic collisions. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about explosions. Thanks for watching, everyone.